Hello and welcome to Cosmos and Commerce, the podcast where insightful business discussions and vibrant Cosmos cocktails intertwine to bring you a wealth of entrepreneurial knowledge. I'm your host, Michelle from Body Ache Escape, and with me is the ever-enthusiastic Janice with Remax Connection and the Humble Crate. And we're here to enlighten your minds and fuel your entrepreneurial spirits. That's right, Michelle. Today we're in for a conversation as rich and stimulating as a well-brewed cup of coffee. We're traveling to Reynoldsburg, Ohio to talk with the brilliant mind behind Five Bean Coffee, a sanctuary where every cup is a harmonious blend of passion, creativity, and ambition. Yes. We, <laughs> we want to give a warm welcome to the Hi. coffee queen herself, Tracy Heitmeyer. Tracy, it's an honor to have you with us. We're eager to discover all the secrets of your brewing empire. <laughs> welcome. Hey, okay. you're welcome. So can you share the story behind the beginning of Five Bean Coffee? What inspired you to start a coffee shop? I honestly, it wasn't like I was like, I need to own a coffee shop. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do for the chapter of my life. Jason and I had... I had a daughter for my first marriage, and I had two kids together. They were four and five. I was not the type of person to sit still or ever relax, so I needed anything to do in the next chapter, and I had been working for myself since I was probably, what, 20? In my early 20s, like I started, my dad had his own business. He's a general contractor, and he said today, he's like, look, I know this lady. She hangs wallpaper. She makes a really good day. He was setting out numbers, and I was like, that sounds amazing. And he's like, you can do that. That'll be easy. He set up a job for me. He took me to somebody's house. He showed me how to put paste on one wallpaper, slap it up on the wall, showed me how to cut it. And he goes, okay, well, I'll be here in a couple hours on you and walked away. <laughs> So that was my dad just kind of was like trial by fire kind of program. And so I, I provided a living age a couple of years and I married Jason. And then I took some time off. I was still doing wallpaper. I started doing interior home painting, like the faux finishes and stuff. And then I worked for at my, one of my husband's interior painters. So he taught me like, had to do a really nice paint job and but I always made my own schedule and I knew I never wanted to work for someone else again I I don't know I just we were trying to we were sitting around the kitchen table with our next door neighbors trying to figure out what's Tracy going to do what kind of business can I open that would give me the ability to be around in the evenings for my kids because I wanted it to fold into the family and our next door neighbors were over and it, they actually said, well, why not like a coffee shop? Because those usually close up in the afternoons and then you wouldn't have to work in the evenings. And I was like, oh, sounds kind of good. So we started looking at, at this point in time, we still had, Dan was doing some land development or getting into it, my father-in-law. And so we were like, well, there's a spot there and that was close to Central High School. So we were like, well, maybe we can just do something in that space. And we said, okay, well, if I'm going to do it, I want to drive through because people drive by and hand you money. So, so we just, we started rolling on that. And then we looked at like a Dunkin' Donuts franchise. We looked at Tim Horton. Like we started looking at all the big companies and then... I think Jason was somewhere and he had a cup of crimson cup coffee or he saw it and he was like, this looks a smaller and it was their base in Columbus. So we called them and lo and behold, they kind of hold your hand and walk you through the whole, that's their job is they help independent coffee shops set up business. So I was like, well, that's perfect. Cause I don't know a thing. I know what I like. I just don't know how to do anything. So we started engaging in the process with them. It was a nice process because, like, they didn't charge us a fee to do all this. They were just helping us. That's their, nice. their coffee. Yeah. 
Yeah, they make their money back by us purchasing from them. And now that I'm doing well, I make a lot of purchases. So, but they have been a a good asset and trained me in most everything. So it was, and they're close and they're all really nice. So it was, I think it was a perfect fit for what we were looking for. So when was that? How long have you been open now? That was back in 2000 and probably that was researching was like 2006, 2007. We opened in October of 2008 right when the housing market crashed. So that was a lot of fun because my husband was a custom home builder. So, and then I opened up expecting, well, people saw a coffee shop that they would just automatically be coming because, and so as I sat there and watched the Titanic one day with commercials between customers, we kind of, it, it was bad. I mean, I, there were days I would make $200. So we were, we were very poor for a couple of years, but, and I was working open to close cause I couldn't afford to pay anybody. Right. Yeah. So when people always ask me, oh, are you going to do another one? I'm like, I, I don't want to, I'm like, I have PTSD from that time in my life. Oh, I don't, I have no interest, none. So. so what were the biggest challenges that you faced during the startup of opening five bean coffee and how did you overcome that? Money, 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 money. We did have a cushion for me to be operating off of for a while, but I, I legitimately, we burned through that. And at home, we had no money either because Jason was out of work. So he lost his job during all of this and then had to start, he started his business as it was his father's business. And then he transitioned, started his business. But, you know, there were times he was working temp jobs just to be able to feed us. So, and we had the three kids. I wasn't receiving child support for my oldest. So we we had a lot of challenges happening in those years. But I just, we kept looking at the numbers. And every day, every week, it was growing a little bit. Mm -hmm. And my... Back in the day with just me, me, and I think I had two other employees, I had to make $400 a day to, to make it. And we were at 250 at first. And then, and then we ended up, it, it, it didn't take too long, but it long enough, it hurt. And then we just kind of, the whole thing just kind of kept going at a snail's pace. My signage is not great um where i'm located um the first few years everyone was like i never knew this existed and like they, people still do that i've lived here for 10 years and i've never seen this and i was like you just have to turn your head when you're on the road <laughs> yeah, and right, like, open your eyes. <laughs> like, yeah i don't know what else to tell you no i hear that i've been here five years now mm-hmm. yeah I, I know yeah i hear it all the time too people are just and yeah. you're like you're 14 years now right michelle yeah and actually, yeah. we hired um, Tracy's husband, Jason, to do our build out for our new space. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. He did it's a beautiful awesome new job. space. Yeah, awesome. It is beautiful. <laughs> it is beautiful. I, I, I would be so happy if I could have a non cluttered, larger, clean space. Right. I know. We could I have, have bigger now. <laughs> I bet. Well, I think whatever space you have, it's like your home. Whatever space you, you have, your, yeah, you grow, you grow to what you have. Yeah, so. yeah. And you were worried that you weren't going to be able to like fill it in the beginning. Like, oh my gosh, the space was so empty, and now I literally have boxes hanging from the rafters. Our volume has just. There are days where I'm like, we just can't do more volume. It's there are days we peak. You said you started at two hundred dollar days. Where are you at now? We are between three and 4,000 a day. Oh, yeah. That is wonderful. There are days we have gotten over that number, but those are, exactly. those are days where I feel like we're maxing out the potential of staff sanity. And there's only so fast that you can work. And my kids. Yeah, there's a lot of coffee. Yeah, it <laughs> is. It's a lot of being that fast. You have to have great staff or the quality really suffers. 
So yeah. we have in the times that we are growing or what, um, there's, there are times like we just had a time where we had six, um, employee changes. So I have currently oh. have like 26 kids on staff. So oh, wow. it's a lot of, it's a lot of cats to herd and juggling and scheduling. Yeah. yeah. One of the biggest challenges to just keeping everyone on the same page. And if Kenzie makes your drink, Sienna should make it the same. Hannah should make it the same. Does it look the same? Does it taste the same? And that's, yeah. we use a lot like the roosters model. It's, you don't go there because it's like the best food you've ever had. You go there because it's consistent. Like, mm -hmm. have you ever been there and the meal's been off? I haven't. It's just a consistency. I'm not a Cameron Mitchell's restaurant. I'm a, like, like I would equate myself to like the rooster's philosophy. I want to be high volume, consistent. Yeah. The coffee's good. It's really good. The, we've got a great variety of stuff. I'm really proud of what we serve, but it is, it is good coffee fast. So Tracy, can you share a moment or achievement that you consider your biggest success with five bean coffee? I don't know that there's one moment in particular. I think the, I think my biggest success is probably just getting it going and keeping the growth up, adjusting to, I think I'm pretty good at, like during the pandemic, we had to totally switch up what we were doing and close, we closed down the inside and we went drive through only and the processes that we had to put in place to get it, we ended up, we used to just write everything on a pad of paper and that was, you would listen as the order was being taken in your little headset. You would mentally start making the drink and then we would, someone at the register would write it down. So if you forgot it, you could double check. Well, when we started doing, we went from like six cars in the drive through is like a busy drive through rush to we had a line of 40 cars all day. So we managed to get our drive through times by the time you ordered to the time you were cashed out was a minute and a half. It was drive through only. If I could do drive through <laughs> only, I would do drive through only. It is so efficient because you're not turning around. You're not taking an order from inside, blending that in with your, yeah. and inside people like to talk more generally. Yeah. So drive through is yeah. efficient and I like fast and efficient. Yeah. That's so yeah, it's, it, it's been, and then the process is to switch us back to doing both and still trying to maintain those quick times. This, that's been, that's probably the most challenging. Yeah. So you went from not busy to very busy. What is the marketing secret that you did to get yourself so busy? We're known for our customer service. I mean, the steady growth. We've always in the restaurant industry, three to 4% growth every year is normal. Until the pandemic, we were averaging between 11 and 13% every year. So it was basically word of mouth, social media. And I've been very fortunate. Um, Pickerington social media is not always kind. I, we have the reputation for, I remember going to one of the chamber things and one of the people from Cameron Mitchell's was there and people were like, why can't we get a Cameron Mitchell's restaurant here? And they were like, your town has the reputation to tear up restaurants on social media. And he's like, we don't want involved with that. Yep. I don't believe I was you. like, oh, great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. We can't have nice things because people aren't nice. Right. So yeah. I was just telling Janice that I bought a package of posts to post about body ache escape on Pickerington peeps. And I'm so nervous. <laughs> to post. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. We'll all jump in on you. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. It's, but it is, there are those random people who just can't be happy mm -hmm. and you can't make them happy. And I, I this, <laughs> well, yeah. And this may turn, I think this transitions to a question you had in the list later, but my, my business philosophy is what you concentrate on, you grow. Um, 
So I always felt if I was going to spend 20 minutes wasting my time, because my time is valuable. We own businesses. We got things to do. I spent 20 minutes of my time concentrating on trying to make someone happy who was unhappy and I didn't think I could ever please. I would be doing that consistently. Whereas if I spent 20 minutes concentrating on who are 10 customers who are great and will say nice things. So I just concentrate on them. There are several customers I've asked not to come back. I'm like, you know what? We're just, this is a dysfunctional relationship. It doesn't seem like you really like us. Yeah. Yeah. And we just can't make you happy. So there's a store over there across the street. You just, you go there, maybe they'll be better. Cause obviously we just, we can't keep you happy. And I'm so sorry for that. I'm losing sleep over it, but I'm not gonna anymore. Yeah. So bye. Yeah. There's, when I started over there, there was just that one Starbucks. And now we have two Starbucks and there's four or five other coffee shops around. Yeah, our numbers are still good. The pandemic doubled my business, Mm -hmm. legitimately doubled it in the course of a month. People had nothing else to do but sit in the drive-thru line. So there there were people- wanted to get out. Yeah, so that was their experience. And then we'd chat at them out the window. And I I had some kids who, one girl who did not want to work, she was afraid and she wanted to stay home. So she was off the schedule, but there were some kids that were just like, put a mask on me and throw me at the window. I want to talk to people. Mm -hmm. So we did. Humans are social beings. We can't be locked up. Yeah. Yeah. Back to the marketing question. I just have to give an honorable mention to your sign out front, your (laughs) A-frame sign with all the cute sayings that people take pictures of and post all over social media. Yeah, that, and I'm so mad. We didn't have our name on the sign. We had the one that went super viral. Like Jennifer Jennifer Aniston posted it. Oh, wow. Wow. Yes. That's cool. And I was like, that's my sign. There's my car in the background. That is so cool. Yeah. Do you remember what it was? What, what did it? It was everybody falls apart sometimes. Tacos do, and we still love them. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But that was just like that's just something I started a long time ago, and then my manager Lauren now does the signs. But it people get so much joy out of just those little tiny things. Mm-hmm. And when you work in the window, sometimes you talk to people and you're the only person they see the whole day. So, you know, being kind, being happy, complimenting their nails. Oh my gosh, your earrings are great. Mm-hmm. We just, we love to compliment our drive through people and make them smile. And then they're, that's just, that's a great way to start your day. You make them feel good. And then they, yeah. yeah. When somebody compliments you at the beginning of the day on what you're wearing or, wow, you look beautiful today. Your smile's great. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh my gosh. And that's a great way to start your day. Mm -hmm. Well, you've been in business a long time. Well, one of them was Kimmy left after eight years because she just had a baby and Mm -hmm. she's graduated college and got married. Those are, I wish those girls well, love them. And some of them still come back to the staff parties, but I like to have a culture where we don't do shenanigans. There is no, there's no infighting. If there is someone who is upsetting the balance of the boat, then they go. I don't care who they are or how well they work. It's not worth, your staff performs to the level of your lowest couple of people. And if your lowest couple of people have a lot of hours, then they're infecting, they're infecting the bag of apples. Yes. So they have to go. It's, I like to have happy, positive people that want to come to work, that enjoy who they're working with. They get free coffee while they're there. They get all the food at cost. When they're not working, they get half off their drink. That's not to be taken advantage of. And we do have conversations about staff meetings. I bring in like a list of the bills I had to pay this month. And some of them are stupid because it's like repairs. And I'm like, well, I had to replace these three things and this because 
we didn't take very good care of our things this month. So this would have been an extra $3,000 that could have went into raisins. There's all these, I try to let them know if I'm struggling with something, why I'm struggling with it. Or if I'm complaining about something, the reason for the complaint. Like, I think most of these kids, a, a lot of these kids, I'm their first job. So they have no basis for, and I don't think parents talk with money about their kids nearly enough or with their kids nearly enough because mm -hmm. they don't have a clue like bills. My electric bill is $1,600 a month. I bought a second air conditioner because we were all warm in there. So there's like, <clears throat> there's 110 things these kids don't understand that go into all these decisions that, that the adults around them make. And I always, I, mean, I parented my kids like that. I just tried to explain to them, well, dad and I aren't trying to be mean. We're just, we know what's around that corner. So this, and this is why I think they understand it better. And I try to just foster a space where, Hey, we can talk about, we can talk about hard things, but we have to, we have to clear them out and let's, let's all work together because if we're working together and we're having a good time, work isn't that hard and they're making good money. You know, kids, the kids make really good money there. So, yeah. So that's, I guess, one tip for you cut out, working Michelle, with the younger generation. I know one of the things I had to, oh, either. Okay. Oh, you have okay. to need a stamp on the envelope. <clears throat> yeah, she's. I said you need to put a stamp on that, and she said, "Are those American stickers, American flag stickers?" <laughs> Can I put it on my laptop? On my, you know, yeah, on the back of your laptop. Um, yeah, there. sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So, um, wow. So you had you have to teach your kids about bills. What are some of the other uh, tips you have for managing the younger generation? Because I know you. That's one, one cool thing about having a coffee shop is that you can employ younger yeah, or younger people. So I've had to, I have to have a lot of patience. I don't know. I think like the teenager group seems to be like my, I, I get along with them. I think better than, I don't feel like my mom totally understood, in, like understood anything about teenagers, but this group, this current group of teenagers is interesting because they were raised during the pandemic and they were stay home. Mom and dad are going to give you money. We don't want you to work. It's best mm -hmm. for you to not work safe. They were rewarded for doing nothing like that was. And so some of this is like residual that. And it, well, why do I have to work so hard? Well, you know, I can make $15 an hour at McDonald's. I'm like, but do you want to? Yeah. Like it, it's. You go to McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah. It's there's teenagers are challenging, but they're also, there are these little creatures trying to figure out where they fit in the world. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they don't get along with their parents. So they come at me like I'm going to be like that. And I'm pretty open. I'm pretty, if there's an employee, we've had a couple of kids who are gay, bisexual, what, whatever their definitions are, and they get picked on about that. And I don't tolerate that at work. So like, I hear about it, I go to the source of it, and I'm like, this stops now or you're done. Mm -hmm. And I fired a few people over things like that. But I... Once they know I'm going to stand up for them, I think it gives them a little bit of comfort or confidence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they know that they can talk to me about things. I'm just, I'm a normal person, but I'm also a mom and I, I've had to call adult men in positions of power in some communities around us and ask them to be professional when they speak to the girls at the coffee window. Oh well, yeah. And like they're doing their job and their job is good customer service. This isn't a flirt with you and you're three times her age. So oh, no. when you're here, let's keep it professional. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. What are you accusing me of? I'm just asking you to be professional. It's yeah. <laughs> oh, and, and there are men who give 60 year old men who give 20 year old girls their phone numbers. 
I'll say, oh, call me. And then I call <laughs> and, and they're like, I didn't do anything inappropriate. And I was like, well, can I talk to your wife? Because I want to get her opinion on this. Yes. Yeah. So we do lose a few customers here and there from that kind of stuff. But those are customers you don't need. They can get a bunch. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I'm sure Michelle has had to kick out her fair share of creepy customers. Oh, yeah. Probably the same guys. (laughs) (laughs) Could be. I haven't had to deal with that here. So I'm. That's good. Yeah. 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 Not here. It's, yeah. It's just, it's the younger girls that are pretty and they're. And they're just, they're nice. Mm -hmm. And that's, you should be allowed to be nice as a female without that implying consent. (laughs) (laughs) To, yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone knows that reputation is crucial. Yep. One bad Google can do you in. I I feel like you answered this part. I'm going to ask it a little bit differently. Okay. Can you share... Do you have any tips or any? Not really anymore. Like I, I used to just ask friends, family, customers, Hey, would, would you leave us a review of, if you're happy? <laughs> Those negative ones. I, I did look at a company cause I have, there are a few, there are people you can't make happy. And a couple of the most scathing ones are people I've had to tell not to come to the shop again, but I, I don't think it's. I just leave them on there now. It's an honest representation of all the shit that we go through. Mm -hmm. So it's, we do our very best to make sure everything is great, but customer service isn't always a hundred percent on point. And I always tell people when they complain, I thank them. And they're like, I was so scared to tell you this. And I was like, don't, because how do I know what's wrong if you don't tell me? Mm -hmm. Like I can't skate along just thinking everything's always fine and not, like I need to be aware of where the weak things are because if I don't, if I I don't know, then I don't know what to work on. So some of those are just the price you pay. And there are a few that I think have been planted on purpose, those ones, but I've, I've responded to, I respond to all of the negative feedback, but there are some that I think aren't legitimate and I don't deal with those. Yeah. So, yeah. So Tracy, what's your daily routine and how it contributes to your success as an entrepreneur? Do you have any special things you do every day? My routine anymore is don't go to work. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. We, I quit working in the shop about four years ago. I've got, Lauren is my manager. She is a lovely human. She's, she just had her second child. She works three days a week, but manages like we, our group chats are some of the most inconvenient things that happen just with questions or concerns or, Hey, so-and-so's this blah, blah, blah. Can I switch shifts? And it's a manager with a new person. It's just those type of you have to have your, you have to be available. So Lauren is amazing, does a great job. She understands my philosophies. It took her a few years. I used to on, only do the hiring and the firing, and now she's allowed to do that as well. We had to get her people picker a little bit better. I interviewed somebody because Lauren's on maternity leave this this week. And my youngest daughter, she's like, I want to sit in on this interview you do. Cause I always tell her, I don't really interview. I just sit and talk to somebody for 10 minutes and get a feel for them. Cause I don't need to know if they're mm-hmm. like, I don't care if you're passionate about coffee. I really don't. I'm not passionate. Like I'm passionate about running a good business that makes money and people like to work in. That's what I'm passionate about. Mm-hmm. Coffee is the byproduct. Mm-hmm. Um, so we just, so I just sat there and talked to this girl for about 10 minutes and I was like, okay, I like her. And, and then Bryn, because Bryn is just graduated college. She's going into her master's, but she's interviewed a lot. So she was like, I have a question. And so she threw in a couple of questions, which I thought were great. And the girl gave really good answers. And I'm like, I'm interviewing to see if it's going to be a good customer service person. I want. Mm-hmm. So I can train knowledge. I can't train attitude. Attitude just yeah. is not. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I would rather work more 
then hire the wrong person. Like I will, I'll still be like, I just need a body. And I was like, well, I'm going to be your body because I'm, I can be your worst employee for a little while until you find the right person. Cause it is not worth wasting our time on the wrong person. Mm-hmm. We, we put a great deal of effort into training people and it's a total a hundred percent waste of time yeah. when we train the wrong people. And I got to tell you, a lot of those wrong people are working at other local coffee shops now. Well, so I, yeah, I'm, well, I'm (laughs) happy to have my worst employees be theirs. So that's okay. (laughs) There used to not be a lot of balance. I tried, I always took Sundays off. That was like my only day. I was like, nope, not working. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't for church. It was just, I like a Sunday. Mm -hmm. I just, I like to roll out of bed late and we always have dinner with our neighbors on Sundays. So I just, that was like my only real break. And then gradually transitioned to, I had all the evenings off and then the weekends off and So it's it's just been a gradual transition into now. I just, I go in, I check in there two or three times a week. I grab the dirty towels, make sure I talk to everybody. And if, if there's a problem employee, I go in and I hang out and I work a little bit and I watch, and then I'll just, I have conversations. I said that I just popped in the other day and I looked at somebody's drink and I was like, wow, that drink looks so delicious. It's got so much extra caramel on it, but they didn't order extra caramel. So I said, she's going to be really upset when she comes through next time. And her drink looks like half, half drizzled because you overdid it. I said, so I'm not saying your drink doesn't look beautiful and it's not going to taste great. I'm saying you're going to make her disappointed. If you keep doing this, she's going to be disappointed every other time you don't make the drink. Mm Mm-hmm. So we have consistency for a reason. Mm-hmm. It's, and she's like, well, the hole's too big on the top of the squeeze bottle. I said, oh, you know what the joy of that is? There's 50 more lids back there. Go get one that works better. Fix your problem. Mm-hmm. This is it. Well, I had to put this much on because the top's too big. No, you didn't. Just fix your problem. Mm-hmm. Take some initiative. Go back there. Slow your pour. Slow your pour. <laughs> Well, when it's hot, the sauces get oh they get meltier, softer. yeah. So they come out faster. Yeah, I mean it's a simple science project. <laughs> so, but a lot I don't. I think some kids, their parents just don't let them do anything, so they don't know how to solve their own issues. There are some kids that come in and they like completely can't make decisions, or they're scared to make a decision. Well, I didn't know if I was allowed to change this. Well. If it's dirty and needs cleaned, then of course, mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm never going to yell at somebody for trying their best or you thought, it, you thought it was going to be helpful. Okay. Mm-hmm. But it's no, I, I always try to pride the, pat the kids on the head that take the initiative to do things. So, yeah, I always love the mantra. It's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. <laughs> <laughs> I use that one in the marriage yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I bought that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Tracy, you may know this, but my husband's name is Joe and I have two dogs named Java and Mocha. So I'm the only one without a coffee name and I feel pretty left out. Okay. If you were to come up with a coffee and name it Michelle, what would be, how would it be made? Okay. I thought about this and it, the only thing it hinges on is if you like this flavor, but I don't know if you like this flavor. Cause I know you like, okay. I know you like white chocolate and I chocolate. Do. Yeah. But we have a new drink and it is a frozen okay. chocolate covered banana. It is because okay. it is, it's pretty. I feel like you're, I feel like you're like me kind of in business. A little bit like I get this yeah, yeah. you're just kind of yeah. you're not super complicated you're like I will just I want a good business and you work at it you're working on it so it is espresso milk that polar powder that we use and then a real banana so okay. there's a little bit of healthy in there mm-hmm. it's still nice and yeah. sweet it's delicious and then you get a little bit of chocolate 
And then we put a crunchy hard shell on the top, just as a little added surprise. Mm -hmm. And just because it's fun. And sometimes you got to be a little crunchy. I can I tell them. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but I was trying to find something that had like some, well, because not all of our drinks have a lot of natural ingredients in them. Some do, some don't. But the frozen ones can get a little. So I was like, I need something that has a natural ingredient in it. And that, that one has I a... I love it. Yeah. It's it's healthy. Okay. So good with my wellness vibe. <laughs> yeah. It's good and healthy. Sounds good. There you go. So Tracy, what piece of advice would you give an aspiring entrepreneur looking to start their own coffee shop or any other business? Have a lot of money. It is. It just. It's so much easier to grow. Oh, God. <laughs> It's so, things are so expensive. Yep. It's, people come in all the time and they're like, oh, I've always went to own a coffee shop. And I was like, oh, you want to work 16 hour days and not make any money for quite a while, right? And they're like, well, you seem to be doing good now. And I was like, girl, yeah, they, it's a lot of work. And with Michelle, you just did a build out. It is not cheap. Mm -hmm. Like I want to, I'm struggling because there's, I need to do some, I would love to remodel the inside of my place and just make it a little more functional for how we work. And, but then I got to shut down for a few days. So then I'm missing all that revenue the most, yeah. and then I've got to spend all of that money. So I'm trying, I always try to figure out how to do our repairs overnight. Mm -hmm. Like we will shut down. I'll shut down a couple hours early if it's a big one. Mm -hmm. But, and then we've replaced flooring, we've changed out cabinetry and countertops overnight. It's, it's, I, that I do have a wonderful construction guy that will do that for me. You're but in that regard. Yeah. It's, it's just, I, I don't know. There's a lot of things I would like to do. And I totally forgot what the actual question was. I okay. Think we give to yeah. letting an entrepreneur money. Yeah, yeah. It's money. Money money solves a lot of issues. Yes, it does. Yes. So knowing what you need now. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't. It, it's so much easier to scale when you have yeah. money. Like you can hire the right people. Yeah. You can yeah. market it yeah. when yeah. you want. Yeah. yeah. Janice is still learning what? how to figure that out. Janice is still learning how to figure that out. <laughs> She needs to start hiring people so she can uh, grow. So, yeah. So I can do. Yeah. 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 And now I'm only five years in. So yeah. I'm a newbie compared to you guys. Well, well, of course, I've been in my real estate for 28 years. So, I mean, I have yeah. like business, but it's just me. Yeah. But mm. still, customer service and all that jazz, it makes a difference in everything that we do. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So Tracy, knowing what you know now, is there anything you would have done differently when starting Five Bean Coffee? Um, I, I I wouldn't say I would have gone to a bigger space, but I probably would have planned our space a little differently. Mm -hmm. Because back, I mean, back then we didn't have, I would like to get back into DoorDash and like the delivery stuff because I quit doing it. It, I, I literally, there was one point during this maybe a year, like in 2021 or 2022, I just, I had to, I was working uh, pretty regularly for a couple of weeks for some reason. And we do, we were doing DoorDash and I l literally went home and I was just sick about going to work the next day. I was like, keeping up with the DoorDash and there's all there's an issue. There's always an issue with every order. People were trying to make their drinks. I want extra shots. I want extra, this milk, I want this. And then we're ringing it up. So we're constantly getting shorted money. It just wasn't put together quite right. And I was sick about going to work. I was hearing that bell go off in my head all night. I was like, I don't even want to go to work in the morning. So I called DoorDash at 5 a.m and said, we're done this day. Take me off. I, I do not want to fill one more order. I can't do it. And I went to work and told everyone and a couple people cried. They were so happy. Wow. And I got hugs from the whole staff. Oh, wow. It was just bringing morale down so much, but I lost a thousand dollars profit a week because of it. 
So that was a nice revenue stream. So I would, I'm considering, I, I need to do some remodeling stuff. I'm considering picking that back up and taking away pretty much the rest of my indoor seating. Oh. Um, oh. But that's a big commitment to make. Yeah. So, because I'm down to three little tables. Are they full um, back most of the full? time? I mean, people come in and just sit and with their laptops and read book and uh, drink coffee. One or one or two of them. That's, yeah. 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 And, th but then there's on the weekends, it's always, there's the tables inside, but the tables out, people will sit outside as long as the weather's not awful. Mm -hmm. I think if I vamp up the patio and then did that, I think I would have to do both at the same, make that available, but because, and then they could still walk in and order things, but it wouldn't be, and some people just like to walk in and order, but the indoor seating is, that's the thing. I just, I don't have anywhere else to go. I'm 970 square feet. Yeah. I mean, I have, you've seen, I have boxes to the rafters. Yeah. There's not an inch of backspace that I can spare. Yeah. Same here. So, Yeah. It's just, but I don't want to increase my rent. Rent right now is stupid. Yeah. Yeah. And my rent's pretty decent. I mean, it's, but it's still a big expense. For real. Kick yeah. that nail salon out and move on. But, but then I, my rent would double mm -hmm. and then my cam fees would double, which the cam fees are stupid. So yeah. what resources would you recommend to someone looking to start their own entrepreneurial journey? A good financial advisor. I think you have to, because uh, I honestly, if you're working for yourself, you have to be able to account for your home life. You have to be able to pay your bills at home. And I was fortunate at the time when we started, I was able to, I was able to start this. I, I actually, I raised the money. Like I did a whole presentation to a group of people and got three, four main investors, and then a couple people who did physical work for me, and I paid them later mm. kind of thing. Mm. So that was key. I've paid off all of all but one of my investors like several years ago. And then the one, the last investor, they didn't want, they wouldn't let me buy them out. Wow. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, they, they've always had, I think it's either eight or 11%. Mm. Yeah. So I just, every year I just write him a check and move on with my day. He like, I barely so ever hear from him. Dark. Yeah. He doesn't give a shit what I do. He just wants that check every year. Yeah. So yeah. You know, but same. I want to invest in a business like that. <laughs> Right? Is, I was I like, can't. I would like to be done with this. Can I just write you a big check and you go away? And they were like, no, no. Like, damn it. So maybe one day I, they will. Uh, I don't know. Who knows? So maybe he'll die. <laughs> just talking to um, a good financial advisor, making sure that you're, you've got your ducks in a row. And also, you know how much everything costs and you can afford to pay your bills without the right amount of income coming in. Yeah. Because I think a lot, that's a lot of people that just get their, get in over their heads. And with interest rates the way they are right now, I don't know how you survive that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, uh, that's What's the next big thing. What's the next big plan for five beam? Um, well, it may be that little bit of remodeling and changing up what we do. Um, that that will involve a pretty serious conversation with with Lauren too, because eventually Lauren wants to buy the business. Like she would buy it now. Mm. I'm holding out because Jason and I are still building our retirement nest egg, and my salary half my salary goes into our retirement. As in 2008, we got wiped out, mm -hmm. so we were we were living on pennies. So we we have a a lot of work we've been doing. Brandy Holloway's been helping us. We put us, we get us all put back together and whole. And so when we, I'm, we call me, I'm practicing retiring. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying. And then Jason, he's finally gotten, he's not working on weekends now, which is the, for the first time in, since we've been married, mm. which is nice. 
So we're, our goals are just to kind of keep transitioning where he doesn't have to be working 80 hours a week. So now he's working 60, which seems more reasonable. Hmm. Oh so, yeah. But, are there any other business ventures you're considering or would like to explore in the future? No. Once, uh, honestly, but, I think my mindset changed so much. I used to have to be incessantly moving all the time. Couldn't sit still. And um, I think I had breast cancer 10 years ago. And I kept trying to kept keep going and kept moving and doing. And I kept screwing up my surgeries. So I burst a blood vessel. I had complications. And then I, that, and then in 17, 17 and 18, I tore muscle, the labrum in my hip. And I got it fixed, started doing too much, ripped it again. So like my life has taught me like just slow down a little bit. So I've learned to enjoy the not running around and being crazy all the time. Yeah. I really, I try to operate on a more, a, a slower pace, less chaotic. And I've learned to like less chaos. So when people say, oh, you should open another one. I was like, no, absolutely not. Yeah, I like, I would, if Lauren wanted to open a second one, I would probably help her financially and emotional support. But I'm not interested in that kind of chaos in my life anymore. I, I just, I cried so much when I opened that business and just how am I going to pay these bills? I owe. Yeah, but you would be starting from experience, not from nothing. Correct. But I just, what if it doesn't take off fast and I got to work 16 hours again? Mm. And I never, have... it would, no, it wouldn't. You're going to be starting from what you know now, not from what you knew then. I don't know. It's just, it's just more, I'm telling you, I got PTSD from the whole thing. I, know. I just don't, I, do too. I don't <laughs> want the, you just don't have the desire to do that. You're it, no. transitioning into a slower yeah. paced life. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I don't, I, I make a very, I, I make more off the shop than I ever thought I would. I thought this would be a nice little job that would just give me a little bit of spending money and it would just be around for however long. I didn't really know, but it has well succeeded my expectations. So I just, I'm very happy with where it's at. I don't need to make more money. I like, I get, I could, but then I'd be working more yeah. and I, I'm enjoying, I have two year old grand twins. I see them five days a week. Katie's bait. Something goes wrong with Katie's nanny. I'm over there. There's just, there's a lot of, there's a lot of bonuses to mm -hmm. just being around. Yeah. I have a mother-in-law with dementia. When they need help, I'm available. Yeah. My mom lives with us. I'm available. Yeah. So I spend my lives, my, a lot of my day times in more acts of service now than, than I used to have time for. So. Yeah. Under I understand. That's, yeah. When that's, being my age too, I understand that having taken care of parents and adult yeah. kids yeah where you're coming from. yeah when my sister was off work for a little bit I always said that there should be always someone in the family that is not working to be able to take care of all of the things <laughs> available like, for everybody yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 sometimes it's great and sometimes I'm like oh, I'm not doing anything for me so yeah I have started this year I'm like this is the year of me so I'm getting this fit uh, I'm my, I'm going to get a revision down here this year. I'm, I started exercising this year. I cut back on my drinking. I'm like, this is the year that I'm going to get my shit together and start feeling better because it's just been all about, it was all about the business, all about the kids. And as a woman too, I think a lot of us feel guilty if we take care of ourselves more and put ourselves in front of some of the others around us. And so don't feel guilty about making this the year of you. Just I uh, honestly, yeah, I don't anymore Good. because like as the kids are getting older, they're making all these decisions and some of them, they just don't even consider our opinion. So I was like, well, they're going to quit needing my opinion. I'm going to quit caring about theirs <laughs> <laughs> or 
not quite that harsh. I'm just, yeah, I'm going to make what I want and need a priority right now. So. Good for you. Good for yeah. you. Yeah. So. So, okay. We're going to switch gears into the lightning round now. We're oh, going to ask right. these fast questions. They don't necessarily have to fast answer. <laughs> Let me start over, Michelle. All right, Tracy. We're going to switch gears right. into the lightning round. We're going to ask right. you some questions, and you just give the answer that comes to your mind first. This could be dangerous. Yeah. What is the book you've most given as a gift or the book that made the biggest impact on you? Well, honestly, it, there, there's a book that's um, Holistic Remedies. Oh. I, I'm not a big fan of, like, medications, and I, I'll, take, I'll take a lot of supplements. I'll do, I like to try to fix myself without medication most of the time mm -hmm. it's been helpful what's your favorite holistic remedy oh geez i'm really into there's a, a mullein tea mullein. it's m-u-l-e-i-n like my mom has this really weird cough but anyway this tea and you drink it and it's supposed to clear your sinus like all of the phlegm in your body and the mucus it's supposed to keep your mucus healthy mm. so my mom's cough is gone Oh, good. oh, I need to get that for Joe. It is. It's amazing. Yeah. But they have it okay. in drops and they have it in a tea that you can drink. Where do you get and that? I, Amazon. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's okay. just, it's been versus mom just kept trying all these different cough syrups and medication. She's always sucking up. It's like, I was like, just try this. And she did. And she was like, I haven't coughed oh, wow. in two days. Oh, wow. Yeah. It works. Yeah. I love yeah. it. What's yeah. an unusual habit or absurd thing that you love? Oh, God. My my thing, I love the TV show Love Island. It's my, <laughs> what and is the it? UK version, it's on Hula, Hulu, oh. Love Island. Love Island. It is these 20 and 30 year olds just all trying to find love. And they're all ridiculous. And it's so stupid. And that's actually, that's where I found my car. We were watching it during the pandemic. And... There's like 10 seasons of the youth, but like the second or third season, they drove up in these little convertibles. And I was like, that is the coolest car. And so I found one and I bought one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's where I got my car from. But no, that's, I just, I'm obsessed with the show. It's the ringtone on my phone. It's. I'll yeah. have to check that out. I never, I never would have guessed it that. Is, it is the dumbest thing ever, but I just love it. I love it. I love yeah. it. What's your proudest accomplishment? My kids. I, yeah. There's, they're, I'm so proud of them. They're all, they all have a work ethic. That is the biggest right. brag I get on them all the time. Everyone is like, I just don't know kids that work like this anymore. So they're all really hard workers. Oh, good. Yeah. Learn from their parents. Yes, exactly. Well, well, they grew up, all three of them worked at the coffee shop. Yeah. One of them might have gotten fired three times, but. <laughs> three times? <laughs> oh. I'm going to get that, Katie. <laughs> I knew you'd know. Oh, well, that's hilarious. So what purchase of $100 or less has most positively impacted your life? Oh, geez. I buy a lot of stuff. Just dumb stuff. Just like anything that I can organize with. Mm. I'm. I can be very scattered. So... Bins, hooks, having a space for each thing. And like at the coffee shop, they all laugh at me because I like a label maker every, and I like things to have homes. So I like bins and things Thank just you. to, or yeah, it, anything to organize or keep things visually clutter-free. It makes my brain happier and I like being able to find things. What is your current passion project? I don't really have one right now. I think my passion project is me right now. I was going to say, it's your stuff. <laughs> you know? It's probably me. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm just, I'm trying. I've been going to Pilates now. I'm trying to find an exercise where I don't hurt myself again. <laughs> I was like, my hip needs fixed again, but I... It's, it needs replaced when I do it. It's a long story, but mm -hmm. I'm trying to get all my scar tissue stretched out and prep myself to be a better candidate 
or better at surgery when I do it at the end of the year. So I'm just working on getting myself in a better space. So when I get all these things done, then I can just move on, relax. Yes. Yeah. So do you have one skill that you'd like to master? I, I have a lot of skills that I'm good. I'm reasonably good at. I'm not great at, I, what's that, was it doer of all master of none? I, I don't know that there's anything I really, I would like. I know what you're a master of. What? Putting together furniture. <laughs> I'm okay at that. <laughs> um, we volunteered to come help us put together furniture when we were moving in. Whoa, to our new nice. Well, I'm good at that. I do it all the time. Karen said she was like, I, I just, I don't, I, I've been doing handy projects since I was young. I used to repair my brother's matchbox cars with paper clips, like their axles would break. And I would, and my dad would let me solder stuff. Like my dad didn't ever treat me like a girl. He taught me just, well, if you want to fix this is how you fix it. Mm. So I don't know that there's anything I really want to master. I do want to, I want to watercolor paint. I really want to, it's like one style of painting I haven't done, but I love it. So that is on my radar this year that I want to start. I want to learn how to watercolor paint because I can my do. My sister's in here does watercolors on the cards. Maybe I should have her teach you or do it. There you go. Out. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah. yeah. Hook me up with her. I, will I am Lois Clark. Do you remember her? She always had stuff at the, at the library and she used to work at the library. I do know that name. She's, she's lived in Pickerington forever. We lived next door to her growing up and okay. I have several of her watercolors hanging in my bedroom because I just love them. I just think they're so pretty and I want to do that, but I just, I have not invested the time because I don't like to do things I'm not good at. So I put off doing what I don't know how to do. I guess that, practice I, makes perfect. Yeah. Maybe. I need to start practicing because <laughs> I'm, I haven't yeah. even... I'm not, I'm scared to do things that I don't think I'm going to do well. Yeah, I get that. So, yeah. I get that. So. What was your first job? Uh, I worked at the pool in Huntington Hills when I was 14. Oh. Yeah. My dad said, oh, you're 14. That's the minimum age to work down there. And none of my kid's not going to be laying around on the weekends. <laughs> so I worked at the pool. Probably fairly similarly. I don't know. I don't know when or how I'm transitioning selling this business, but I think Laura needs a little bit more time to figure out. I only want to sell it if I know it's going to be successful. I, cause I don't want to, I've had offers from other people and I didn't think that they would get what I was doing. And I think the staff culture is so important there that they need parented similar, at least this staff needs parented similarly. So I don't want to sell it to someone who's not going to keep it, keep it going as well. Yeah. That's your yeah. So, but I would like to be coming down to Florida. We come down every five or six weeks for a week. I want to keep doing that. I'd probably be adding, visiting my to other kids because I don't know where Bryn's going to end up. She says she'll end up close to us. I don't know. Danny's in Cincinnati. So if he ever settles down, gets married, I'd like to go down there and spend time with his kids. I'm sure I will be helping Katie with the twins going to activities because she's one person with two children who don't like to do the same thing ever. It's a handful. Yeah. Yeah. Two handfuls. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So what song do you turn on when you want to get pumped up? My favorite song is Earth, Wind, and Fire, September. That's a good That's one. That's my favorite. Yeah. Oh. Um, someone told me that they, uh, that was, they did a study of songs that make people happy. Uh -huh. And that was like the number one song. And oh. I was like, okay, well, this explains a lot for me because I, <laughs> If I'm in a bad mood, I put that song on and I can't not, you can't not sing and dance. I'm very affected by the things around me. So happy music is good. 
if I'm around a bunch of sourpuss people, I turn into that. Mm -hmm. If it's, yeah, I can be emotionally overwhelmed by walking into a big room of people sometimes. So music is very helpful. I listen to music all day long here in the shop and I, oh yeah, I, yeah, I love it. Okay. Yeah. Like we never have coffee shop music playing at the coffee shop. I tell the staff, as long as it's not, we're not doing rap or not, it has to be coffee shop appropriate. Yeah. But we don't, I don't have music in the background. I was like, play the music you like. Yeah. It puts you in a good mood. Right. So some days it's country, some days it's. Yeah. My yeah. genre changes from time to time as well. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Tracy. Would you rather have the ability to create any flavor of coffee in the world, but it can only be served cold? Or would you rather have the ability to make the most aromatic and robust coffee, but it can only be served piping hot, even on the hottest day of summer? Cold. Cold? <laughs> cold, by far. Okay. Our cold drinks outsell our hot drinks like... Any time of the year. All year long. Yeah. Even in winter. Yeah. And I don't think I've ever had cold coffee. It's just so delicious. <laughs> My it dad is... used to sit on the porch and he was a coffee drinker all day long, but he would always throw ice in his coffee in the summertime and just, mm -hmm. he loved iced coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Um, our stuff is so good cold. It's in like, even in the winter, it's one frozen drink, one ice drink to one, to one hot drink. Hot drink. Oh. And then in the summer, it's two frozen drinks, three ice drinks to one hot drink. Hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. So no wonder they give me a weird look when I say I want it hot. Oh, <laughs> it's totally fine. A lot of people do it. Yeah. But it is our, we are known, well, in the ridiculous amount of flavors that we have, we're just kind of known for all those different combinations of things. Yeah. Often imitated, but never quite duplicated. <laughs> so. <laughs> You're an original. Yeah. Tracy, thank you so much for joining us on Cosmos and Commerce. This oh. has been amazing. And I know our listeners will have so many takeaways. Yes. Tell yes. me, where can our listeners find you? Um, we are physically located at 2087A, State Route 256 in Reynoldsburg. We're just across or just under, you know, under. 70 on 256 and we're just a quarter mile up the street on the left near bb bop across from chipotle mm -hmm. and then it's fivebeancoffee.com we do have facebook instagram and we do have a tiktok that we've got some cute stuff on so That's bad. That's bad. yeah well i'm sure that well, a lot of our listeners are going to be following you and coming now if they haven't so thank you so much and thank, thank you to all of our listeners for joining us we hope you're able to sip some wisdom savor some insights and are now ready to brew your own success don't forget to hit that subscribe button and stay updated on our latest episodes and if you're thirsty for more find us at cosmosandcommerce.com until next time keep sipping keep savoring and keep succeeding thank cheers. you cheers have a good day thanks tracy so much thank you I appreciate it, girls. Appreciate you.